All right, guys, it's Dave Dean here, and we're going to go through all the settings of Fio's M11S. All right, so we're going to start down here. I'm just going to go into the settings tab here, and we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So you can see the first one is mode choose. So when you click on this, uh, right now, currently, it's in Android mode. So basically, when you're using uh, music apps like Tidal, Apple Music, Amazon HD, uh, those type of apps, you're going to have to have it in Android mode, right? Um, if you want to use pure music mode, that's actually going to be all the music that you have stored on the Fio player itself. So if you're downloading music from, say, HD tracks, acoustic sounds, uh, if you've ripped some of your CDs onto here, that's all going to be playable through the Fio app. So if you want to have the best possible music experience, then you would click on pure music mode. You're going to see it load up the Fio music app. All right, it takes a little bit. And then it's going to tell you basically what it said right there with the, the 3.0 uh, music app. This I actually reset to factory. So that's why that came up. If you've already did the update, that won't come up right there. Right, so right now I have, I think there's only... Yeah, there's nothing on here because I erased this to its factory settings. I haven't updated this yet, but I figured I'd do a video just on the settings for you guys. So normally that's where all you like your CD ripped music is going to be. Um, like I said, anything that you've purchased off HD tracks, uh, acoustic sounds for high res stuff. Uh, even if you had like old iTunes music and stuff like that that you wanted on here, that would be in here and that'd be playable through the, the file music app, right? So to get out of here, you just have to... Uh, you can see swipe from the top down and then we're going to go back into mode choose again. So USB DAC mode. So when you're in this mode, you're using the player's DAC inside here and it has a few different modes as you can see on the top of what you can use, right? So you can use uh, BT, so Bluetooth receiving, right? So you would just click on that. All right, see waiting for a connection. So I'm not connecting anything to that right now. And then that's going to go back into USB DAC mode again. Just hit OK, right? AirPlay would be for like uh, if you're using an iPad or your iPhone or whatever, then you could use that for AirPlay. And then pure music mode is what I just showed you, right? This is going to load up the file music app. So those are all the actual settings under mode choose, right? So we're just going to go back to Android mode. And then we're going to go back into settings. So we just did mode choose. So that was the first one. Wi-Fi is pretty explanatory. You're going to choose whatever Wi-Fi network you have, right? Just like you would with any other device. Bluetooth, the same thing. You would change, you would take this on and you would just connect to whatever device that would uh, show up on here. Um, you can see it's, uh, uh, if I want to pair a new device, you just hit pair a device, right? And then that'll bring up whatever device if you wanted to, uh, iPad, like um, your iPhone, uh, say for me, I got a Uconnect on here, so I could connect to that. All of that is going to be done through Bluetooth, which is pretty self-explanatory as well. Uh, when you click on more here, so you can use this as a portable hotspot, right? Um, obviously, you don't have internet, right, with the field player, so you'd have to connect your phone or whatever to it, and then you'd share this as a hotspot. So you can use that VPN. You guys all know what a VPN is. Um, cast, if you're going to cast to see like your TV or whatnot, you can use that. So that's pretty much everything under more. All right. So now we're going to go into the audio settings, right? Um, so on here, you can have your PO out. So you can switch that to either line out and you'll get this message that pops up on here. You just said, okay, right? Or you can switch it to SPDIF. So that would be the coaxial digital out. And obviously... If you've watched my uh, review on this player, the M11S, then you're going to see that it does not come with um, the coaxial digital adapter. You have to actually purchase that separately if you want to use it in that mode, right? So go watch my review on that, and I'll give you my thoughts there. All right, so we're just going to put it back onto PO. And then the same thing for 4.4 mode, right? You can either have balanced right? Or uh, balance PO or balance line out. That's what those ones are, right? And it'll just give you, give you there. It always gives you the message, right? 
just to make sure that's what you want. Uh, SPDIF mode, you can ch uh, change that to DOP or D2P, right? Either or, however you want that. It comes standard uh, DOP, right? And then the gains that it has on here, you have high gain, you have medium gain, and you have low gain, right? Um, once again, low gain, I found doesn't really work with much. I find a lot of uh, companies have a like a low gain on there. And honestly, I've never used low gain with anything before, right? So if you guys have used low gain before, uh, let me know in the comments what you used it for. All right, so your low pass filter mode. So this is one of those ones that it gives you, you know, quite a few different options. But for me, I really don't hear much of a difference when you switch between these. And I've tried these on uh, uh, basically the M11 plus LTD, the file M17, uh, and now this one. And honestly, I don't hear anything really much of any difference, right? But it gives you, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different filters you can use. I'm just going to keep it with the one that's stock, right? Um, and now you go into your uh, Bluetooth audio encoder. So this comes with the ability to do LDAC, LHDC, uh, Aptex HD, Aptex, AAC, and SBC right? So pretty much every uh, Bluetooth uh, Kodak that you can think of, right? And then if you're going to use it um, on here, it says tr trigger Bluetooth audio LHDC encoder selection, right? So you can have optimize for audio, which will give you 900 uh, kilobits per second, right? Or you can do balanced audio connection quality, and that's 500 kilobits uh, to 560 kilobits, right? And then you can have optimized for connection quality, which is 400 uh, kilobytes per second, and then optimize for low latency, 256 kilobits per second, and then best effort aptitude or adaptive bit rate, right? So you can choose any which one of those you want, right? Balance is pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know why you would ever want a shift it between uh, the two, but you can't there, right? And then all to DSD. Once again, you can try this mode out. Um, you just have to make sure whatever you're connecting to it, um, you know, some DS, if you're using it in your car, there's a lot of, I would say DSPs that don't play DSD files. It's unfortunate. It'd be nice if they all did that, um, but they don't at this point in time. And, um, so you get, you got to watch when you're using it all to DSD, because for me, I have like a Helix DSP ultra. And, uh, if you were going to try using this through the coaxial digital output, it wouldn't work. Right. Um, and DSD in, in general, is, you're going to have a lot of the DSPs out there that are going to have a hard time with that. Right. So that mode is more for like, if you're listening to headphones and whatnot, then you can turn that on and see what you think. See if you think the sound quality is better, the same, you don't notice a difference, that type of thing, right? Uh, and then the last one, you can adjust the volume uh, when it's on line out, right? Okay, so that's all on your audio. So for display, you can have this, you can turn it on and it'll display the, uh, the sample rate display. Uh, you can switch it to dark theme if you want to, right? And it'll just switch it like that. I'm going to go back to white because I like it better. I'm going to turn that off. Brightness level, I have it on 57% for this video. Hopefully, it's not too bright. You might even want to turn it down a little bit, but uh, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, but you can put this, you can see if you go all the way up how bright it gets, right, at nighttime. But for this one, we'll probably just leave it around here for now. We'll go, about, we'll go about 50, what do I have, around 57, that's good enough, right? Uh, night light. So you could schedule it, uh, you can turn it on now. I'm not like a big fan of that type of thing. I just usually put it to whatever, you know, if I'm at night, I'll turn this down for the brightness level, uh, and in the day, I'll turn it up, right? Um, I don't usually use the night light whatsoever because I'm honestly, I'm not usually using this um, at home for the most part. I mean, I tested it with headphones and stuff at home, but for the most part, I'll just go into the brightness level and adjust it to how I want. I pretty much have did that with pretty much everything, right? Your wallpaper's pretty self-explanatory. 
you can go in here. Um, there's not going to be any wallpapers on here right now because I haven't uh, loaded anything other than that, right? Other than what it comes with. So we'll get out of here and uh, screen time out. This is kind of interesting because you used to be able to have it uh, set to off. So it would never, um, like it would never time out. Now they just have it up to 30 minutes, which is fine, I guess, because you can just double tap it anyways. I always set mine to the, the latest. It drains the battery a little bit more, but it's not a big diff difference between that. Font size, I have mine on large. You can change it to whatever you want, right? Uh, display size is default. That's good for me. Uh, screen saver, pretty self-explanatory, whatever you want, right? Um, and then your lock uh, screen display, same thing. You can put whatever you want, just like a phone. All right, so under global, you have system navigation gesture. This is pretty self-explanatory. Anybody you have Android or whatnot, you're gonna know all these different features anyways, right? Uh, Multi-function button, add to your favorites. That's the one button that I showed you guys if you watch my review. Uh, as soon as I do the unboxing, they have the button on the left-hand side that you can pretty much put to whatever you want here, right? So it's got add to my favorite, switch songs randomly, play pause, uh, delete the current playing song, switch filter, switch equalizer, enter USB DAC mode, and enter Bluetooth receiving mode, right? So you can put all that on that one button. And then uh, power off timers. You can put it to sleep whenever you want. Idle power off. I have it off. I don't use that. Um, volume settings, once again, max system volumes at 120. I just leave it at that. You can put it to whatever you want though. Rotate screen, pretty self-explanatory, right? If you want it, uh, like that, you can just switch it up and then I just turn it around and use that side like that. Um, unfortunately, what are we going in here to turn this back? <laughs> global and uh, rotate screen yeah so we don't want it like that that's a little confusing right but if you wanted to um say you wanted like uh your 3.5 or 4.4 or you're using a coaxial adapter if you wanted it to come out the top for whatever reason then you could use rotate screen to me i like everything come out of the bottom it's a nice cleaner look it just looks better so i just leave it as the factory default on there right and then uh, in vehicle mode this is basically if you want it to detect when your ignition is turned on or off then the fio m11s will turn on when your ignition turns on and off when it when it turns off right when your ignition is turned off so that's pretty self-explanatory they've had it in quite a few the uh fio daps over the years chances are more than likely even though this is a 700 hundred dollar dap and even the ones that are more expensive chances are you're not going to leave it in your car um, but if you had it hidden somewhere in your glove compartment or whatnot, and you were just going to the store, you know, real quick, that's something that you might want to use, right? You could just have it on anyways. Um, but most of the time you're going to have your DAP kind of like where I have mine or down below, but it's going to be shown. So chances are, you know, you might use it a little bit, but you're not, you're probably not going to leave it in your car overnight, right? Like I don't anyways, because I don't want it to get it stolen or whatnot. I don't leave anything of value of value in my car, right? So that one's that. Um, double tap to wake up. So that was like what I was talking about, like when you have this timer on like 30 minutes or whatever, and then it shuts off. All you have to do is, uh, and I'll kind of just show you right here. So I'll just turn it off and that's just a double tap to wake up, but I don't have it on right now, but I'll show it to you right now. So that was under global tap to wake up. All right, so now I'm going to turn it off, and now I'll double tap it. See, and that I like that feature because then anytime it goes off, you could just double tap it, right? So I'm going to turn that off for now. Okay, so that's all the global settings, apps, and notifications. I'm not going to go through all this because this is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you're going to update your apps. Um, anybody that has an Android phone is familiar with this. If you're if you have an iOS. A device like an iPhone or an iPad. It's going to work pretty much the same. You know how you can just click on, uh, like with the iPhones, you can just click on your username or whatever, and then it'll update all your apps for you. Well, this is pretty much the same thing. It'll tell you right here which apps need to be updated if I was connected to Wi-Fi, which I'm not right now. Storage. So storage is going to have your internal storage, right? Which you have up to uh, 
Uh, I think on this one, it's 32 gigabytes, right? And then um, whatever micro SD card you're going to use, you can have up to two terabytes on here. So plenty of space, right? This is how you're going to manage it on there. Your battery. Um, so this is, you can disable the battery charging, right? With that button. Uh, charging optimization, you can set that to whatever level you want it at. So if I wanted it to stop at 84% or 80%, you can do that by setting that. And then battery saver, you can switch that on if you want, right? And then uh, same thing, battery saver turns off when your phone is at 90%. So basically when this is charged to 90%, it'll turn off, right? So it's it's one of those things where you want to keep your battery you know, to its maximum level. Cause if you're going to be spending 700 bucks, a thousand dollars, even, you know, you go up to the M17, it's like $2,500 Canadian. You want to make sure you're, you know, you're using your battery smart, right? So that's one of those things in the settings uh, that you want to use depending on how you use this, right? So it's going to all be depending on what are you use? Are you a heavy user? Are you using listening to a lot of headphones? Or you just have it in your car, that type of thing. A lot of the time, I'll charge mine at home. That way it's fully charged when I go into my car and I never have to charge in my car. So I don't have to worry about that type of thing, right? I use it. I basically use these devices the same as I would uh, my phone for the most part, right? Uh, battery manager, same type of thing, right? Uh, detect when apps drain your battery. Show battery percentage, which will show up here if you turn that on, which I'll just show you. See, 86% just jumped on there right now. Uh, tells you when the last full charge was 21 minutes ago. Uh, screen usage since full charge. I don't know if this is 100% accurate because I basically just reset this, right? And I wasn't charging it at all. So I think it just says last full charge 21 minutes ago, even though it wasn't fully charged, right? Because I didn't plug this in to charge it because it's probably dropped like since I've turned it on, like whatever it's dropped. When you guys see me start this video, maybe it wanted to go down 1%, maybe. Um, so I never actually charged it before doing this right now. Uh, screen usage since full charge, same thing. That's basically what that, what I was just talking about. Right. So that's the battery part for you. Um, then you're going to privacy. A lot of this stuff, I'm not really going to go over because it's all basically like your phone. If you had an Android phone or whatnot, it's going to be working the exact same way, like security, same type of thing. Right. Um, accessibility. Uh, it's your text to speech output, your uh, your font size, uh, display size, default, magnification, if you want that on or off, color correction, color inversion, uh, large mouse pointer, remove animations, uh, dwell timing, touch and hold delay. Um, all this stuff would be similar to your phone, right? So that part I'm not going to really go over because it's you're you're not really going to be using a lot of that stuff. Google services, same thing. We don't need to go into their accounts. Same thing. It's going to show you whatever your account is or add account, that type of thing, right? Then uh, we go into the system. This is where you change your languages. So uh, obviously this one comes standard with uh, English United States. You can turn it to, you know, whatever you want it to, right? Virtual keyboard. Um, once again, these are all the same things that you would have on your phones, right? That you can use. Because this is Android 10. So basically if you're familiar with Android this is all going to be really familiar to you. Um, legal information, uh, reset options. So you can go in here and this is where you do your erase all factor reset, reset app preferences, reset Wi-Fi, mobile and Bluetooth. You can do that there. Your date and time. Like I said, you can change that. These are all really basic stuff. Uh, system update. This is where you would go to update your device. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. This is the version it comes with, but as soon as you connect it to Wi-Fi, you'll upgrade to the latest version. You can do local upgrade, but obviously it's better to do online upgrade. And it's nice that now that it has like Android 10, you can do it uh, online. Makes life a lot easier. And what else do we have on here? About device, this is gonna pretty much tell you everything it has in it, right? An ES9038 Q2M DAX times two. Uses the Snapdragon 660, right? Device name, FIO M11S. Uh, it's got the model number. It's got your battery uh, capacitor, so 9300 
Uh, it's 4.97 inch, the screen. It's got a 720p resolution uh, screen as well. Three gigs of RAM on here. Um, one thing I want to note about RAM, and even like the FIO M17 only has four gigs of RAM, I wish these things would start coming with, you know, like six to eight gigs of RAM. It'll just make things so much quicker, and then you'd be pretty much on the same pace as like a, a phone for the most part. So I'm hoping, you know, maybe next year when FIO starts bringing out some of their, uh, uh, hopefully if they bring out some newer dApps next year, that we're going to get, you know, more RAM storage hopefully by then uh, eternal storage 32 gigabytes once again a lot of people like complain about this type of thing i've seen in the forums complaining about internal storage when the price of micro sd cards are so cheap i could care less i'd rather have more ram on here and just like you know just whatever internal storage it needed right 32 gig is plenty i'd rather see more ram because that's going to benefit your uh, your system because anybody you can go out and buy like you know micro sd cards for cheap now right so to me i would rather have more ram than internal storage because the more ram is going to be what matters more right uh android 10 you can see right there build number uh once you update that that's obviously going to change uh send number m mb number uh the mac address all this stuff is like i haven't updated this at all so none of that's really relevant and um so that's all the settings on there. So now you have actual settings on your FIO player too, right? So this is only going to pertain to, like I said, all your downloaded music. So HD tracks, acoustic sounds, wherever else you guys download your music from. And, um, you know, your rip CDs, maybe you have iTunes or whatever other music that you've downloaded, anything basically that you've bought and downloaded, right? This doesn't count for like Apple music or, um, like Amazon HD music, it doesn't count for Tidal or Cubuzz, any of that stuff that you download, this is irrelevant to that. This has to be music that you've actually purchased or you've downloaded uh, or ripped off your CD, that type of thing. That's the only time where these settings are going to be relevant, right? So once we go up here, these are um, some of the other settings that you're going to use. So equalizer is going to be in here, right? So you can adjust to whatever you want. I mean, an equalizer, an equalizer is an equalizer. Once you, if you want to turn it on, you just click this thing, right? Turn it off. But you can adjust it to whatever you want. Um, these classic jazz user, like, I've never liked those. Those have been, you know, those were, like, started out in, like, receivers, like home receivers a long time ago. And... I was never a big fan of any of them ever, right? It just kind of puts a weird spin on your music when you select those modes. And honestly, I've never liked any of them ever, right? Um, you want, uh, like, as time goes on, I think you're going to see more and more like parametric EQs in, in the daps and whatnot, just because you can do a lot more adjusting with a uh, parametric EQ, right? Uh, feel kind of over the years, kind of got knocked with like their basic EQ that they've used. Right. And, um, you're starting to see some of them use like the parametric EQs and whatnot now, uh, which is a good thing. Right. And, um, but like the classic jazz, uh, rock and dance, those are all pretty much useless. Right. Nobody, I don't know anybody that's ever used any of these things before. You know what I mean? Like dance metal, that kind of stuff. Um, it works a little bit different on here than like the old uh, uh, ones I was telling you about, like, you know, back in the day, I'm talking like 20, 30 years ago, right? Where they had like hall, uh, jazz, church, that type of thing that you could select on the old home receivers. But I, I was, like I said, I'm not really a big fan of any EQ. And, it, and if you're using it in your vehicle and you have a DSP, the DSP is like, you know, a thousand times better than what you're going to get in something like this. Um, so this is kind of pointless, right? For using in the car, but it has one right and i'm sure they're just going to get better and better as time goes on uh the feel link so basically with this you can use bluetooth if you've connected it to an android device um but you'd have to use wi-fi if you're connecting it to apple right you can't for whatever reason it doesn't let you uh connect to like an apple device via bluetooth it has to be through the wi-fi connection right and that's basically if you want to connect say your ipad and you want the ipad to control 
uh, your field player. So basically, maybe you had your field player hidden somewhere, and then you wanted to use an iPad or um, a Galaxy tab or something like that, an Android tab. Uh, the Android tab you could use via Bluetooth, whereas um, the, the iPad and whatnot, you're going to have to use over Wi-Fi, right? The Android, you can use both, but Apple, you can only use Wi-Fi to, con to connect it to this. And then once again, if you use the feel link, the only music that it's controlled by on there is all your downloaded music. Basically, everything that'll work on the feel music app. It will not control at this point in time. It doesn't control like Apple Music, Tidal Music, um, you know, Amazon HD Music, Cubuzz, all that stuff. It won't control that downloaded music at this point in time. It would be nice if they have like an update at some point in time that lets you do that. But I don't know, that might be a little difficult because then they're going to have to go into negotiations with Apple Music and and uh, Amazon HD and all that kind of stuff, right? But maybe they'll just have an update at some point in time that does that because I've had a lot of people ask that question, right? Well, if I use the file, uh, file link, um, then I can actually just hide that away and I can use my bigger you know, iPad or Android uh, uh, you know, Galaxy Tab or something that's bigger to control the music. Well, the only, like I said, the only music you're going to be controlling is the stuff that you've actually purchased, not the music apps, right? So that's a that's something that I get asked all the time. So that's basically the feel link there, and I have um, I have actually for the M17, I did a feel link, and I think the the feel M11 plus LTD. Uh, if you want to know you know, how to use that, go watch those videos, right? I'll put them in the description on here. So that's that, uh, field control is just a field control app, right? Um, this is added device, so I can add whatever de uh, device I want to that for the, the field control app. And then this is just the theme, whatever theme you want it on. Not a really big deal. Scan music is like once a once again, it's anything that you purchase. Once you purchase something, you have to scan the music. It'll register on the device and then you can use it. Without scanning the, all your downloaded stuff, it'll never register on here. So that's why I use the scan the music. Wi-Fi transfer music. I've used this a few times. Basically, you can, once you connect uh, Wi-Fi transfer, it'll give you like a, an IP address that you just pop in on your computer. And then you can actually uh, download the music from your computer onto your device uh, wirelessly, right? So that's kind of a nice feature. And I've used it and it worked fine every time I've used it. Sleep timer, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can set this to go to sleep at any point in time. Um, and I'm just going to go all these other ones before I hit the settings button here. Language, pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, I just have it on fall system. You can switch that to like English or whatever you want right on here. Uh, your reset database, it just resets everything. You're both shows you what version of the actual feel app it is, right? It says no update now. That's just because I'm not connected to a, a Wi-Fi connection. Otherwise, it would it would uh, update to the, the actual one. Exit just gets me out of here. But we're going to go into the settings here first, right? So resume. You can turn it on here. You can resume from last song. You can resume from last position, right? Either one of those. Gapless playback. It's basically, say, if you're playing a full album... Um, you don't want any gaps in between the songs, right? It'll just keep on playing. That's what gapless playback is for the most part. That's a big thing for a lot of people. Um, I know there's a lot of people like they, you know, they'll, they'll be a device that comes out and it won't be gapless. So they're not a big fan of that device, even just based on that, right? They like their albums to just play from song to song to song to song. Because uh, some songs go into each other too, right? So that's the nice thing about Gapple's playback. I like it myself. I always have it turned on, right? Play through folders. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory too, right? You can even hit these question marks and it'll even tell you. When enabled, the app will automatically switch to the next folder, album, artist, playlist, after all the tracks of the current list have been played, right? So some of these ones, if you don't know what they are, you just have to hit the question mark. And they'll pop up on here and tell you what it is, right? But they're pretty self-explanatory, you know. Lock screen, album art, do you want it on, off, that type of thing. Auto enter, now playing, right? Same thing. When enabled, the app will switch to the now playing page after tapping on the track to start playing, right? Um, auto search for lyrics, right? So you can have that on or off depending on what you want. Your re uh, replay gain. You could on, have it on album or track, whichever you want, or have it off. You know what I mean? USB output. 
here's where if you click on that, you can have a, a USB audio uh, access mode, DST output mode. That's when you can switch this to DOP, D2P, or native resolution, right, on there. Uh, US volume control, no USB. Um, you can have it software control or adaptable, right? And uh, it just says nothing detected because I don't have anything plugged in on the USB right now. Max volume lock, once again, max volume lock. The app system will force the maximum volume output if turned on, which can solve the problem of abnormal DOP slash native DST output on some devices. It will take effect after replugging the USB DAC device. All right, so I'll confirm on that. Allow background activity. Once again, allow background, background activity. The option can solve the problem of abnormal background playback on some devices, uh, but more power will be consumed after turning it on, right? And then the last one on here is play silence on Android, which I don't, I never turned that on. It says may solve the problem of abnormal background playback on some devices, but on the other can handle uh, stability issues. All right. So that's pretty much everything under USB output. Uh, SPDIF, I talk about this, uh, the MQA SPDIF, I talked about this on uh, the M11S review that I just did. So I'm not going to talk about it here. If you guys gonna, if you want to know more about that, because uh, it had some issues with the M17 and whatnot, just go watch my review. I talk about it basically once we get in the car. Uh, that's the first thing I talk about, right? So you can switch that on to decoded MQA or Bitstream, right? Whichever one you want. And then artist list display, you can have this whatever you want, like album artist or just artist. And then file size limit for album art. Uh, basically tells you on here, right? What you can choose on here. Once again, I never, I never bother with any of this thing. Notification style, system notification style, custom. I don't mess around with any of that stuff either. So that's basically everything that was under here. I don't think I missed anything. I think that's pretty much it. So that's all the settings under the Fio music app. And that's pretty much it, guys, uh, for the settings. I don't, because I've factory reset this thing. Um, obviously, these are just the apps that it comes with. So it comes with your clock, your Snapdragon, the Play Store. So you're going to download all your apps like Tidal and, uh, you know, Apple Music, Amazon HD, Cubuzz. All those different music apps you just download from the, the Play Store, right? And then the... This right here would where you'd be to go update. So firmware update online, you can do that here. Facts, troubleshooting. I've never had any issues with this DAP or any other DAP. So um, other than the MQA didn't work on the uh, the Fio M17, um, that's an issue that they're working on. Like I said, if you want to know more about that, it, every MQA works perfectly fine on the M11S, regardless of what setting you have it on works fine but the m17 had an issue out of the coaxial digital output plane mqa but if you want to know more about that just go watch the review i did on the m11s and that's it guys that's uh that's pretty much all the settings that we have um on the fuel m11s and i figured i would do a separate video like this on it just so the review wasn't too long because we're at like 30 it's gonna be like 34 minutes by the time this is done right so hopefully you enjoyed that if you want to know everything about the settings on the M11S, this is the video for you. If you want to watch the actual review that I did on here, I'll put the link in the description. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.